Assalamu alaikum. In the modern world, all of us are looking for that special thing called discipline. If we have discipline, we'll be able to accomplish our goals, our dreams, our ambitions. Maybe we would get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We would finally start memorizing some Quran, but you just can't seem to get things done because you're lacking discipline. But today I want to question, is it really discipline that you're lacking? Or is it something deeper? You see, I'd argue it's, it's not discipline that we're missing. It's actually motivation. Um, but I think that there is nuance here. There are three types of motivation. The first type of motivation, which is probably the worst kind, uh, is someone who is not motivated at all. They're, they're not self-motivated, they are not uh, motivated by external factors, they just don't really care about much in life at all. They've lost the will uh, or the desire to live a better life or to improve themselves. Uh, they've, they've become complacent with where they are. Maybe they even acknowledge that, look, I'm not in a good place, I want to do better but they haven't made that commitment to themselves to do better, right? And because that internal decision has not been made, there is no external um, actions that are, that are showing that change. The second type is someone who is extrinsically motivated. You do feel a sense of strong motivation, but a lot of the times it's coming from external factors. So maybe, you know, you saw your friend do something and now you're really motivated and you want to go along the same path. Maybe you saw some social media videos on TikTok or Instagram and you saw someone going to the gym, someone, you know, living a, uh, a fruitful Islamic day in the life and you're thinking, man, like, I want to be exactly like that person. Let me try to go and do exactly what they're doing. And... Extrinsic motivation is something that is very tricky, right? Because we feel like we're doing something productive, right? All of a sudden now we're on hustle mode. Oh my gosh, I need to get things done. I need to live a better life. I need to be like that person, that person, that person. But you don't realize in the moment that what you're actually chasing is not something that you yourself desire, but it's something that was extrinsically projected onto you. And now all of a sudden you feel a need to fit a specific mold. And the issue with extrinsic motivation is it's not long lasting. You know, you'll go through these cycles. You'll see other people doing good things with their lives and you'll think, oh my gosh, like, why can't I be better? All these beneficial behaviors that you try to cram in your life at once and then there's a sense of burnout and then you take a step back and then you're like, do I even want these things in the first place? But then you're like, yeah, you know, I do want to live a better life, but I don't exactly know uh, what a better life looks like for me. And that brings us to the last uh, type of motivation, which I would argue is the best type of motivation, which is someone who is intrinsically motivated. Someone who has a strong internal compass and they're living in alignment with specific core values that they've intentionally and deliberately thought about. How many people do you have with you? Let me show you. I have four people now. I can't okay you like at three o'clock. Okay, all right, that sounds good. Is good for you? Uh, I might need to get a haircut before then, so I might just come now, and I'll just go with anyone. Okay, that's okay. Thanks, Ray. Bye. Bye. Okay, salamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, we got ourselves a nice haircut from our boys at a professional hair salon. Definitely would recommend checking them out uh, if you're in the uh, Sugarland area. But um, anyway, so last time we were talking, we were talking about the difference between intrinsic, extrinsic, and no motivation, right? And now you're probably asking yourself, like, Sufyan, okay, cool, I understand these categorizations, but how exactly does this relate to being disciplined? Well, I'd argue that discipline is simply a byproduct of someone who is who has a strong sense of intrinsic motivation. And when people say things like, oh, it's 0% discipline, 100%, I mean, 0% motivation, 100% discipline, what they're really referring to is that extrinsic motivation is something that's an ineffective type of motivation. So the motivation that comes from you first starting to go to the gym, you know, that's like a fresh 
new emotion and that novelty, that emotional novelty, that's what people are referring to. Or, uh, you know, you see uh, someone else doing something and you get really motivated by the fact that they're doing it. Or someone else tells you that, hey, you look really bad, you need to get into shape. And then all of a sudden, now that's the reason why you want to go to the gym. That's what I think people mean when they say that motivation is temporary. It's that extrinsic type of motivation, the type that's uh, naturally going to fade because it comes from a source outside of yourself. You can't continue to replicate that emotion, that uh, motivation. It's coming from somewhere else. In order to develop discipline, I'd argue that you need to have a strong sense of why. Why is it that you want to uh, accomplish uh, a great physique in the gym, right? Or why is it that you want to be financially independent and you want to do a side business or side hustle? Why is it that you want to be more engaged in the community and be a part of XYZ community project? Why is it that you want to pray your salah in the masjid, right? Why is it that you want to pray your salah at all? Like these are all fundamentally important questions that you need to answer for yourself. Because as you get older, like I'm 24 now, and the, the old, uh, once I left college, which was like two years ago, I realized that there is no one who's going to be able to externally motivate you now. You have to make choices for yourself and you have to decide, okay, everything in life has a specific trade-off, right? If I'm going to the masjid at Aisha, there are specific things that I can't do outside of uh, uh, during that time. And so now I have to make a trade-off. Now I have to decide. I actually have to decide what's important to me and what's not as important. To avoid the problem of these trade-offs just driving you crazy, um, you need a strong sense of why you want to accomplish all the goals for the various categories of your life so that when you inevitably face roadblocks along the way or you inevitably see that other people are making decisions differently from you you can choose to continue to commit to your decision because you know why this this decision or why this thing or why this path is so important to you and having that clarity of why once you have that, then the discipline comes as a natural byproduct. The how becomes very easy because I know that this thing is important. I know that this thing is more important than other things. And now that I have my mind focused on this one goal and I have a sense of clarity, now I can figure out, okay, what is the path forward? As that quote goes, uh, the one who has their why can bear any how. <laughs> You know, I, I, I think if you look at, just to go on a quick tangent, if you look at the scholars of the past, like uh, Imam Al Ghazali, or Abu Hassan Al Ashari, they all went through multiple phases in their life. And at the end, they all came to the conclusion that knowledge is which brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think people often forget that. We get so bogged down in studying the nitty gritty details of aqidah and fiqh and any, any, any other science. But if it's not bringing you closer to Allah, what is the point of it, right? So the person that's searching for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find Allah. So as long as you're sincere and you're on your journey to look for Allah, you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the key thing is, how do we know that we're sincere, right? And I think that's the thing that you have to keep struggling with, you know, constantly asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sincerity, raising our hands to Allah, praying to Allah in the middle of the night, and begging and pleading with Allah for the things that we want. That is the sign of sincerity. And I think a lot of us are falling short in that, right? We want to find Allah, we're claiming that we want Allah, but are we willing to put in that effort? And oftentimes we're not. So then why are we surprised when we're not getting the results, right? So I would say that is uh, probably my advice that whatever you put in is what you're going to get out.
Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, we're back at it the next day. And um, I really wanted to close this off by explaining how this concept of intrinsic motivation relates to us as Muslims. My suggestion would be for every Muslim out there to connect your desire to live a better life and to live in alignment with your highest potential to wanting to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the two are correlated and it's based on your intention. And let's let's dive into that a little bit. Um, you know, the halal and haram in Islam, um, much of that is guiding us towards things that are good for us in the halal and the haram is guiding us away from things that are harmful for us. And even the things that are not necessarily haram, but the things that are looked down upon in Islam, things like wasting your time, uh, talking that is uh, just idle talk, you know, unnecessary speech. All of this stuff that takes up a lot of the average common person's time in society, especially in modern society, uh, Islam teaches us that these things are not what we live for. We have a higher purpose that we strive for. But as Muslims, we know that purpose of life is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course. Um, but everyone also has a personal purpose in their life, whether they want to acknowledge it or not. There are certain uh, visions that you have, certain end goals that you desire within your life. And I would simply encourage you, uh, instead of only making that list connected to your own ego and, and the satisfaction of yourself, that these are just things I desire. This kind of thinking is at this level and you wanna think at this level. And when you think at this level, all this other stuff kind of works itself out. And what is this level? This level is living your life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, genuinely wanting nothing more than the validation of Allah alone. And what does this practically translate to in, in terms of your own purpose in life? Well, naturally, if you're considering how you can live your own life to be more pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're gonna stop thinking about just the daily concerns of like she said, he said, and what's happening around you, and you're gonna focus more on solutions, more on impact, more on purpose, more on legacy. You have an internal compass now. You have a sense of direction. You have a sense of purpose of what are the things in my life that are going to lead, lead me to fulfillment and, and what kind of legacy do I want to leave behind? And once you have that clear vision, everything else just becomes a natural byproduct. And remember how we said intrinsic motivation is something that is a core value principle for you and you're living in alignment with that. So by you uh, living in alignment with the idea, the core value principle, that you want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you have now tapped into an intrinsic motivation, the source of which is the creator of the universe, the facilitator of all affairs, the one who is going to make you successful in any of your affairs, and any of your endeavors. And so, um, as you start to consider uh, the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the perfection of the creator and you start to consider less the limitations of the creation, you start to allow yourself a high level of deep intrinsic motivation that will allow you to think about very big goals for your life, very high aspirations, which we know is a part of being a Muslim. A Muslim should be someone who has high aspirations. Those high aspirations are going to be something that comes natural for you. That's the first benefit of living life for the sake of Allah. The second benefit is that naturally when you have high aspirations, people who don't have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their life, those high aspirations become their master. It becomes controlling over them. It, there's an emotional attachment to where if I don't accomplish this thing, I'm worth nothing. Like there's no purpose in my life. But the beauty about the connecting yourself to the purpose of life is you know that, okay, if I don't accomplish these high aspirations, that's fine. I am just responsible for putting in the effort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me the results if it's what I need, if it's what's good for me. If not, alhamdulillah, I put in my effort and inshallah, that is what counts. You know, one of the questions that the Prophet sallallahu teaches us that we're gonna be asked on the day of judgment is Allah will ask us about how we spent our life. Not about a specific category, our life, right? The entire holistic conscious experience of existence, that life, how did you spend it? Was it spent just always worrying about your ego, always worrying about these lower level concerns? Or was it really spent living your entire existence and dedicating that to the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And 
I, I, I would urge all of us to think about this question of what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want from us? How can I use my unique talents and abilities and skill sets to be able to say with at least some sliver of confidence on the day of judgment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, you know, I tried. I tried to live my life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for, for you, ya Allah. I, I tried to live life for you. And it doesn't have to be some grandiose vision or idea. It could be the simplest things or simply a commitment to the idea of living life for Allah, of wanting to make a difference in this world before you leave it, and of wanting to find at least some small little projects that you can contribute to that will leave behind a lasting legacy well after you are gone. Um, so that's my message for all of you today, and that is the Muslim's guide to long-lasting motivation until the day you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hopefully attain your success and reward and validation with him.